They're as big as bats. Well, we all, we all love them. That's Good morning, everybody, and morning. welcome, especially to any visitors that we have. Um, are there any announcements today? <coughs> Hearing none. <laughs> um, our opening hymn today is To God Be the Glory, number 98. Oh, 
if you'll join me in our call to worship, it can be found in the bulletin to be read responsively. As we walk with Jesus during this last week, we see him in the home of Lazarus at Bethany. Mary is anointing his feet with perfume. That was the sacred moment in the life of Jesus, which we richly could have shared. The sacredness of that moment is with us now as we shut out of our minds all other concerns, real as they are, and we think only of Jesus. We unite with devotion and meditation, conscious of the precious life of Jesus, which he gave for us. Now join me in the prayer of confession to be read in unison. Lord, so often we seem to let the demands of life be more important than spending personal time in prayer and worship. Always there are tasks to be done, errands to be about, even the busy pace that caring for others can demand. Yet somehow time with you gets forgotten. Forgive us, Lord, and hear our hearts as we seek your love. In Christ we pray, amen. My brothers and sisters, as followers of Christ, all we need to do is ask the Lord for forgiveness. It is through Jesus Christ that indeed we are saved. Please be seated. And I'd like to ask our young people to come up for a time of, of um, together. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm wearing my mask because I'm going to ask the kids to come up here for just a minute. I one at a time. I have prizes. I'm going to ask questions. And there's going to be prizes. And don't worry, everybody's going to get a prize in the end because you're going to think this is kind of funny. Okay, let's start with Reagan. Reagan, can you tell me what one plus one is? Two. Two, you're right. And you come up and get the prize. <laughs> come here. Come on. Um, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Little girl, I can't remember your name. Uh, Melody. Melody. Melody, come up and get a prize. There you go. Choose a prize. Okay. And so, Melody, I'm going to ask you a question. Can you raise your hand? Raise your hand for me. Oh, very good. You get the prize. Come on up. There you go. Choose one. And can you tell me, can you spell cat? Can you spell cat? Very good. Greg, can you get the prize? <laughs> All right. Is that very silly that one person does the work and somebody else gets the prize? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not normal, is it? Usually you do the work, you get the prize. But Jesus did all the work. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus suffered and died for us. And who gets the prize? We do. We got the prize. It's kind of a strange way to do things, but the way God does things and the way we do things are different. And so as we approach these, these weeks, these last few weeks of Lent, remember that Jesus did all the work and all we need to do to love him, and then we get all the prizes. Okay? Um, as you go off to Sunday school, let us be at prayer. Jesus, you have done so much for us, and sometimes we forget. And so we ask that we always honor and love you in an extravagant and wonderful way. And the children of God say, Amen. 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 Okay, off you go. As our children go off, um, may we offer to one another um, our love and for Christ. May the Lord of the peace of Christ always be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. As we approach our scriptures, uh, may we be at prayer. Lord, enlighten us to hear your word fresh each day. Help us to rely on your promises in scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Our reading today comes from the book of, from the letters to the Philippians, chapter three, verses four through 14. Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, lameness. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Our hymn of preparation is What Wondrous Love Is This, number 292. Please, please remain standing for the reading of the gospel, if you are able. Please be seated, if that is the best way that you hear. 
Our gospel comes from John 12, verses 1 through 8. Hear now the word of our Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nod, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Please be seated. So over the, the course of time, um, I have worked in a lot of places in the church, especially as a layperson. And one of the most rewarding and probably most difficult um, jobs I've ever held is that as Sunday school teacher. It is a wonderful job um, when the kids listen and learn. It is a job you want to pull your hair out when they're all kind of uh, jumpy and, and frenetic. One of the classes I taught was kindergarten. And in that class, I had some wiggly and sweet little uh, five-year-olds and one seven-year-old. His name was Cody. And he was in the class because he was one of those kids that was just really difficult um, to take care of. Um, he constantly interrupted. He jumped around. Uh, he was loud. And the woman who taught first and second grade said, he's not coming into my class. And so he was in my class. Now, um, add to the, his difficulties in learning and sitting still, add the humiliation of being in a class that was just too young for him. And I must admit that sometimes um, when he just wouldn't pay attention to what we were doing and he's interrupting the class, it was easier to allow him just to drift away and play with some toys in the corner quietly by himself, which was happening one day when I was talking to the kids about Jesus. And I told him that Jesus would always love and forgive you no matter what. That caught Cody's attention. He stood up and said, I bet I could do something to make Jesus stop loving me. <laughs> no, I assured him, there's nothing you could do. Jesus would always love you. Then he came up with some reasons why Jesus wouldn't love him, what he could do. Reasons I didn't really want in that class, but still I said, it's OK, Cody, no matter what. Jesus would always love and forgive you. The next week he came prepared with reasons. I think he spent the entire week thinking about what he could do. <laughs> I could do this and Jesus would stop loving me and some of them were just a tad disturbing. But still I said, it doesn't matter, Cody. Jesus would always love and forgive you forever. The third week he came in again and this time he had a smile on his face and more reasons. I don't think he really disbelieved it any longer? I think he just wanted to hear the words. Jesus will always forgive and love you. And that's the day that Cody finally joined our class. He paid attention. He was sweet. He was quiet. And a few weeks later, we were doing a paper. Now, the paper was a dot to dot. You know, those little papers where you um, go from a line from one to two and two to three. And Cody had some learning disabilities, so I thought this might be a little difficult for him, but we all sat down and started to do it. When they finished the dot-to-dot, -dot, they would have formed a cross. 
Halfway through, um, Cody took his pencil and scribbled all the way through it, jumped up, knocked the little girl over next to him to the ground and ran to the corner. I mustered up all the patience I had, and believe me, I needed to have patience. It's like, here we are again. I, I got the little girl up and wiped her off a little and wiped her tears, got the other kids back to what they were doing, and went over to the corner with another paper and said, no, Cody, we can do this together. It's okay. He turned around, and I saw the tears rolling down his little face. And he looked at me and said, no, I won't do it. I love Jesus. I don't want him to die. In that mo moment, I understood that Cody knew the love, the sacrifice, the connection to Jesus that so many of us may never get to know. We even have a theological word for it. It's called emanesis. It means that you're not just telling the story of Jesus, you're not just reciting what happened, you're not just reading the scriptures, but you are actually there. You are watching it happen. You are feeling the pain. You are gripped with the sorrow. And you understand. It's a place that not many of us will ever really get to go. This morning, we heard of Mary. We heard of the day she poured oil on Jesus' feet. Now, when it opens up again, Mary and Martha are where they normally are in the usual roles. Uh, Mary, Martha busies herself with duties of a hostess, and, and Mary does something unusual. She takes some precious oil. It was imported um, from in North India, and it was indeed extravagant. A denarius was actually one day's wage. This oil was worth 300 denarius. Imagine spending a whole year's salary on a gift. When Mary let down her hair, she was strictly um, breaking Jewish conven convention. A woman never did that in public. She might as well have, have gone into the room without clothes on. It was that shocking. Women simply didn't let their hair down in public, and yet there she was. And it was ex extravagant, even scandalous gift that Mary gave Jesus, anointed his feet with perfume and wiping it with her own hair. It makes us wonder if we will ever give so much of ourselves to God. Our Lenten journey beckons us to be completely changed, to let go of, of everything um, and give it to, to Jesus in breathtaking gifts. Now, most commentaries I read, and I read a lot this week, commentaries and sermons and people's opinions, and they all sort of go right to the extravagance. The extravagance of using oil. I've even heard this, this scripture being used during uh, stewardship time, and the extravagance of Mary, and how about the extravagance of you? But, but to me, this is not about extravagance. It's not the perfume um, that's the point. To me, it's the depth of the understanding of Jesus. It's, it's simply more than extravagance, justified because no devotion to Jesus can be excessive. Jesus' defense of her makes this abundantly clear. Now, Judas is the antithesis of that. He's saying, well, wait a minute, we could use that money. And are you bothered a little bit by that line? I always was, that line, the poor will be always with you, but I won't, won't always be with you. It is bothersome, but I think what Jesus is saying is the care of poor cannot come before undiluted love of Christ. And when this care springs from that, that um, pure place of Christ, it is valuable. When it springs from something else, the value evaporates. I think the scripture is about Mary's love and understanding of Jesus, who he was, what he was going to do, how much he loved all of us, how, how his love was extravagant and complete and pure. Now the disciples, bless them, had traveled with Jesus, had listened to him, had learned from him, they were devoted to him. Peter and the others had been on the mountaintop when he was transfigured, he, they saw the miracle. They heard God's voice saying, this is my son, listen to him. They had witnessed miracles over and over again. Peter, when, when he was, they were asked, who did you say that I am, said, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. I know who you are, intellectually. I doubt that he really had it viscerally. 
They didn't have that visceral understanding of who Jesus was, how much love he gives, nor did they know how to love him back. Cody knew. That little seven-year-old theologian of mine knew. Mary knew. She anointed him with, with perfume, perfume that should have been set aside for a burial. No one in that room understood that his death was coming, but Mary knew. She anointed him for his burial. She knew. She knew he was soon going to die. The disciples didn't get that. She knew that his sacrifice was for everyone, and she knew that his sacrifice was for her. She knew the depth of that love. The others, though they said that they loved him, did not understand that depth. Sometimes we do the same. We love Jesus, we sing we love Jesus, we say we love Jesus, but do you get the depth? Do you really understand? Mary loved him with every fiber of her being, so much so that she let her pride and her embarrassment aside to approach him. She loved him um, so much that she bent in pure humbleness to wipe his feet, to anoint him. Remember, in just a few days, Jesus would also bend to wash the feet of his disciples to teach them the lessons, the true lessons of servant leadership. This is how you serve. This is how you love one another. This is how you love me. No one in that room understood that but Mary. She knew. In a way we can never fully explain, Jesus' sacrifice um, has taken away the guilt of our sin. We can say it. Do we really understand it? The sacrifice didn't turn God from an unforgiven to a forgiven God, and nevertheless, that sacrifice changed the equation of our guilt. He did the work. We got the prize. So Lent is a time for us to try to reach that depth, to reach an intimate, profound love for Christ, to feel the love that Christ has for you, not us, not the world, you. And to give that love back. Now sometimes in the church, we have concern because next week we will celebrate Palm Sunday and it will be a wonderful celebration. And sometimes we go from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday in celebration and joy and forget to stop in between. That's what Holy Week is for. It's stopping at the cross. Is desiring a depth and understanding that Cody had and that Mary had. There will be lots of opportunities um, this Holy Week. I urge you to take them, whether you come here for a service or whether you spend time by yourself in a corner alone, holding him, weeping for him, anointing him with your tears. Don't let him go to the cross alone. Don't celebrate the joy of Christ without understanding the gift of Christ. Our Lenten journey will begin um, on Palm Sunday and we will begin with the palms and we will come in joyous and, and we'll wave the palms and we'll have a wonderful time and then we're going to come down. Then we're going to read the passion story from beginning to end. Then we're going to hear every word and understand the depth and understand the love. Then we will know what Cody knew and what Mary knew. You have a choice in these next few weeks. You can go along just as you always have. You can spend time talking about um, Lent, you can even give up something for Lent and, and complete that. Or you can go with him to the cross. Anoint Jesus with your tears. Feel his sacrifice for you. And no love
like you've never known love before. The true, pure love that Jesus Christ has for you. Love him back. In his holy name, amen. As we come together in prayer, I would like to ask if there were joys and concerns that we need to share with our, our church. Yes. Thank you. For those who hadn't heard, Debbie has made a recovery. We'll be coming back soon. Others. Yes, Kathy. Uh, prayers for my uh, son-in-law's parents, Frank and Eunice. Uh, they both have health issues, and uh, Eunice has had a bout with bronchitis and been on steroids, and that's uh, causing her some troubles. So uh, prayers for them both. Thank you, Kathy. For, if you didn't hear for Frank and Eunice who have um, physical difficulties. Yes. We're seeking prayer for Steve. He's also in rehab. He was going to come, but he's still really weak. Okay. Prayers for. for okay. Prayers for Steve. Um, yes. And, and I, I thank you for that. And I think teaching children, I've always said that we're not teaching about God. We're helping them to remember what they already know. Um, we need to keep the East Berlin United Methodist Church in our prayer. Um, many of you may know it uh, was on fire yesterday. The roof is pretty destroyed. The inside is okay, but there's certainly a lot of structural damage that needs to be repaired. <coughs> yes. Indeed. I don't know if they're listening to us, but happy birthday, Karen. Are there others? Yes. Okay, family members with health problems. Others. Let us take our time to come together in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, at this most holy time, we ask that we can always keep you center in our lives. And that after we love you, we go out and serve others. And so, Lord, we ask you for those that mentioned today that are, are dealing with health problems, um, Steve and Butch and others, um, that, that you be with them, that you put your arms around them and hold them up through times that might be difficult. Lord, we thank you for those that are recovering and for those that um, are getting better. And we, we, we wait with open arms to welcome home um, so many um, who we've not seen in a long time. Lord, we pray for peace around the world, especially in Ukraine, where people are courageously defending their homeland. Lord, we pray for the people of East Berlin Church that this morning um, have not a church to go to, but I'm, I know are praying together and worshiping together in your name. 
wherever they are placed. We know, Lord, that um, the church and the building is not who we are. We are your church because we love you and we're together with you and you lead us. Let us always remember that. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our church. We pray for the leaders of our world and the leaders of our nation. We ask that they bring in decisions of peace, justice, and mercy for all. We ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would like to invite our ushers forward for a time of gift and love.
receive the gift. The gifts we bring before you this day, that the whole world may know the glory and power of your kingdom. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Um, turn to page 13 of the Epistles for Holy Communion. If you have not picked up a little uh, communion packet, please go and do that now. David, could you do the microphone? Microphone. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us, delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with the people of earth and all the company of heaven, we join, praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of our and light, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to reclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when he would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery of sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Most holy God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Because there is one loaf, we are many, a one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. My brothers and sisters, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. This Amen. is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Do this remembering him. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may now go into the world in the strength of your spirit, to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is Near to the Heart of God, number 472. <laughs>
I thank you all for being with us this day. We invite you back uh, for a time of coffee and conversation. Go now, my brothers and sisters, with the love of God. My brothers and sisters, may our service become as fragrant gift. Go with God, who is about to do a new thing in us and through us. Amen. Oh, that was fun.